Weightlessness, altitude. How high to escape gravity? We'll start with this, the following quiz question. When do astronauts become weightless? When they leave the Earth's atmosphere? When the rocket engines are shut off? When the altitude A is greater than the radius of the Earth divided by square root of 2? When the velocity exceeds 14,000 miles per hour? Or none of the above? What do you think? If you're in a group setting, why don't you pause uh, the slideshow and discuss it, and then resume the slideshow afterward. Okay, have you thought about it? Um, if you thought, guessed, that it was when they leave the Earth's atmosphere, uh, that's not correct. Um, it actually has nothing to do with the atmosphere. Besides that, the atmosphere doesn't have a sharp edge that you can leave. The atmosphere gradually gets thinner and thinner as you go higher and higher. If you thought when the uh, spacecraft reaches a particular altitude, um, like the goofy formula I made up, that's not right either. It doesn't matter what, what the altitude is. If you guessed when the velocity exceeds 14,000 miles per hour, you made a good guess, but that's not correct. That's the uh, orbital velocity, but simply reaching that velocity doesn't cause the weightlessness. The correct answer is when the rocket engines are shut off. It doesn't matter what altitude that happens at. When the spacecraft is a f in a free fall, in other words, no more rocket engine holding it up, that's when weightlessness occurs. Uh, so, to answer the question, how high do you have to go to go to escape gravity is it's, the answer is you don't have to go any height. There's no escaping gravity. The altitude doesn't matter. The weightlessness is caused by free fall and that can occur anywhere, even on the surface of the Earth. But space flight is required only for sustained weightlessness and I'll explain that why later. First of all, um, let's deal with the misconception that uh, weightlessness is caused by being far from Earth. If you look closely, there are two little dots here on this picture of the Earth. The first dot I'm pointing to right now is represents an object resting on the surface of the Earth. And this other nearby dot, not that far away, represents the height of the International Space Station, a few hundred miles uh, above the surface of the Earth. Now the force of gravity depends on your distance from the center of the Earth, not from the surface. So you can see the distance from the center to the surface and the center to the height uh, to the uh, International Space Station is practically the same. So the force of gravity acting on the International Space Station is practically the same, a few percent less than on the surface of the Earth. So what causes uh, the the, the space station and the occupants of the space station to become weightless. So to answer that, you have to know what is weight. Weight is the force of the ground pushing against your feet to hold you up. Now you can see over here, I'm standing on a scale. The scale measures the force and says there's a force of 160 pounds of me pressing against the scale and the scale pressing against me. The forces are balanced. That's why I'm staying where I am. Now, if I begin to hop up and down a little on the scale, you can see that force is changing. It's sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more than my motionless weight. It's because it depends on my motion. There's more or less pushing on the scale, depending on, on how I'm moving at the moment. Now, if I take a really big jump off the scale, the scale registers zero. There's nothing holding me up, and I'm weightless. Right here on the Earth, I'm weightless, exactly the same as an astronaut in the space station. So, here we have the top two pictures showing launch of the uh, space shuttle. Um, after several minutes of launch, when the astronauts feel g-forces of the, due to the acceleration of, uh, of, of the rockets pushing up on the, sp on the spacecraft, the engines are shut off and the space shuttle is in free fall, uh, orbiting around the Earth. Uh, nothing's holding up a space shuttle, it's just falling freely. And that's why everybody and everything and the space shuttle itself are all weightless. 
Now, you don't have to go into space to do that, as I've demonstrated in the lower two pictures. The first picture is me jumping off a bench. I feel extra g-forces as I, as I jump off, in the same way that the rocket has extra g-forces as it's being accelerated into space. As soon as my feet leave the bench, I'm weightless, just like the International Space Station and just like the astronauts. You can see my clothes are sort of, my pants are hanging loosely on my legs and my hair is flying out. The wind is not doing that. It's the weightlessness, weightlessness that's causing that. How long does weightlessness last? Well, in this first picture, picture you see me with uh, two weightless dumbbells. And I can imagine you thinking, what are, what are you talking about? Those dumbbells are not weightless. They're falling to the ground. If they were weightless, they would just float there. Well, imagine, if you will, that at the moment this picture was taken, a trap door opened in beneath my feet, and I fell into a very deep well uh, along with these two dumbbells. Well, they would just float right next to me, or they seemed to float right next to me. Um, and so they are weightless, just like dumbbells that you would carry on the International Space Station. The spacecraft is falling freely along with the dumbbells, so anyone inside would see the dumbbells floating next to them. Now in this case, in the real situation, those dumbbells are only weightless for a fraction of a second. As soon as they touch the ground, they're no longer weightless. The ground is pushing against them. You can achieve a longer weightlessness in this amusement park ride. This is the double power shot in Santa Cruz, California. These, uh, the people on this ride feel uh, G4, extra g-forces of acceleration while they're being shot upward. Then they're released and essentially uh, flying freely upward as they reach the top of the tower and as they go down. And so they're weightless for this entire time from the time they, uh, the power is released and they're just falling upward and downward freely and until they, the brakes are applied and it slows down again. So you can get a, a couple of seconds of weightlessness on this ride. What if you wanted longer weightlessness? You could go in this airplane. The uh, NASA uh, reduced gravity aircraft. This is where the astronauts train for weightlessness. Here you see astronauts uh, inside the aircraft. Now is this simulated weightlessness? No. This is real weightlessness, exactly the same as in a spacecraft. Uh, you can get about 30 seconds of weightlessness this way. Now why is that airplane pointing upward? Isn't it, if it's falling freely, wouldn't it be pointing downward? To understand this, let's, let's look and see what would happen if you wanted to make an automobile weightless. You could drive off a cliff, and while it's being falling freely, you'd be weightlessness. But the car would not last very long that way. It would smash into the ground or hopefully into some water or something so nobody gets hurt. But if, um, the better way to get weightless, weightlessness is to throw or propel the object upward. So it, it's weightless. It's flying upward for a while and you get more time uh, being in free fall. Here we see an automobile driving along here, uh, along point A. The force of the ground is holding up the automobile. So there's the occupants of the automobile feel normal weight, 1G. Now as they hit this curved ramp, they feel extra G forces of acceleration as they are being forced into a new path. And as soon as they leave the ramp, they're flying freely along this path and flying objects, or freely fly, falling objects, fly in a parabola shape. Okay, so hopefully this car will land right on this ramp uh, and then uh, the occupants will they feel weightless during this whole time here and when they reach this point they feel extra g-forces as their uh, velocity is being changed from pointing downward to horizontal and then afterward um, they feel normal weight again as the force of the ground holds up the automobile. Uh, by the way, this is just a thought experiment. Don't try this at home or outside. Uh, now, if we have a, a bigger, faster vehicle, we can have longer weightlessness. In an auto automobile, we only got four, about four seconds of weightlessness from a car traveling at uh, freeway speeds. Now we have a um, jet airplane traveling at hundreds of miles per hour, we can do the same thing. 
and get longer weightlessness, about half a minute. Here the plane is flying horizontally. The force of lift on the wings of the airplane uh, holds it up so the occupants feel normal weight. Now as the, as the pilot pulls back on the control stick, um, the plane changes this direction. The occupants feel uh, extra g-forces. But as soon as the plane enters this parabolic path, it is uh, flying in the, in, the, in the path of a freely falling object, and therefore the occupants feel uh, total weightlessness during that time. Until we reach this point, the pilot pulls back on the stick again, changing the direction from downward to horizontal, and the occupants feel extra g-forces. As the plane straightens out, it's just like the beginning, Lift the force of lift is holding up the wings of the airplane, and the occupants feel normal gravity. Well, that looks like fun. Would you like to do that? Sure, you can. Just come up with a fare, uh, five thousand dollars plus tax, and you can ride in the zero G uh, airplane, uh, which is basically a, a, a really cool amusement ride. Uh, you can get about six minutes of weightlessness in a dozen parabolas, each lasting about 30 seconds. You can see the young lady here is uh, weightless, so her hair, is, there's no reason for the hair to fall down against the body or the back of the head when you're weightless. It tends to uh, fly out in all directions. Not fly, just it rest in all directions like, like you see here. Well, if you'd like a longer uh, longer than that amount of time, you can uh, be a space tourist. Here we see uh, a businessman, Dennis Tito, who uh, purchased a ride to the International Space Station for $20 million, which was quite a bargain because uh, now in 2014, the United States is paying Russia uh, about $70 million per seat for rides to the International Space Station. Now if the International Space Station is falling freely, why doesn't it fall to the ground? Well, um, Sir Isaac Newton uh, explained this phenomenon uh, several hundred years ago. He said that if you go to a, the highest mountain in the world and fire a cannon horizontally, the, the cannonball will fall on a curved path towards the Earth. The, the more powerful the cannon, the faster you shoot out the cannonball, the, the longer and straighter the path of the cannonball. And he said if you could fire the cannonball at a speed of uh, whatever it was, 44,000 miles per hour, whatever it was, the, curve, uh, the curved path of the cannonball will exactly match the curve of the Earth and the cannonball will not f get any closer to Earth. It will just keep going around and around uh, in a complete circle. And this, he explained, was how uh, a satellite or the moon could uh, fall endlessly without uh, falling to the ground. This is, this is what prevents the moon from falling to the Earth and prevents the Earth from falling into the sun. It just f falls continuously in a round or or elliptical orbit, as you see here. So to summarize, how high do you have to go to escape gravity? You don't escape gravity, and the altitude doesn't matter. Weightlessness is caused by free fall. Anything that's not being held up by anything, no, you know, no ground or uh, the ground's not holding it up, the rockets are not holding it up. Anything that's falling freely anywhere. It could be close to the Earth, far to the Earth. It doesn't matter if it's the International Space Station like this. Uh, everything will be weightless. Um, you need to get above the atmosphere to prevent the wind from slowing you down. That's why we have to go into space for sustained weightlessness. If you're close to the ground, the, the air resistance will slow you down you fall to Earth. So um, that's the reason we go into space for sustained weightlessness. Hope you, that helps you understand uh, the nature of weightlessness.